Good morning, this is Guy McPherson. It's Wednesday morning, March 3rd, 2021. And this science update is being aired at GuyMcPherson.com, which is also called Nature Bats Last. Today I'm going to talk about the Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment, or SCOPE-X, an experiment designed to collect data for the purpose of refining computer, computer models that simulate solar radiation management. The purpose of this experiment is not to implement an actual test of the practice, as incorrectly stated in numerous sensationalist headlines. The project is headed by Harvard University's David Keith, and the most the experiment will seek to do is release 2 kilograms, that's about 4.4 pounds, of non-toxic dust from a weather balloon 12 miles high up in the sky. This is a relatively small-scale experiment. It has not been approved for implementation at a large scale. Oh, and another thing, this is not a chemtrail program, most importantly because chemtrails are fiction. This, this small-scale experiment was mentioned in two leading peer-reviewed journals, Nature in 2018 and Science in 2020. Sensationalist media stories aside, implementation of this project is probably not in the proverbial cards for reasons I explained in this short video. I have explained this information previously, most comprehensively, in the essay titled Climate Change Summary at GuyMcPherson.com. That's where you can find links to the information I am presenting in this video. First, some context. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, admits that global warming is irreversible without geoengineering of some kind in a report released September 27, 2013. The IPCC is among the most conservative scientific bodies on the planet, and their reports are scientifically diluted under political pressure. This according to a story in the May 15, 2014 issue of The Guardian. On April 22, 2014, Truthout correctly headlines their assessment, quote, intergovernmental climate report leaves hope hopes hanging on fantasy technology, end quote. Time follows up two days later with a desperate headline, NASA chief, humanity's future depends on mission to Mars. First up, greenhouses on Mars. As pointed out in the December 5th, 2013 issue of Earth System Dynamics, known strategies for geoengineering are unlikely to succeed. Climate geoengineering cannot simply be used to undo global warming. Attempts to reverse the impacts of global warming by injecting reflective particles into the stratosphere could actually make matters worse, according to research published in the January 8th, 2014 issue of Environmental Research Letters. In addition, as described in the October 3, 2013 issue of Journal of Geophysical Research Atmospheres, geoengineering may succeed in cooling the Earth, but it would also disrupt precipitation patterns around the world. In the Arctic, quote, any sea ice or snow retention as a result of geoengineering is lost within a decade, according to a paper in the February 15, 2014 issue of Journal of Geophysical Research Atmospheres. Furthermore, quote, Risk of abrupt and dangerous warming is inherent to the large-scale implementation of SRM, that's solar radiation management, as pointed out in the February 17, 2014 issue of Environmental Research Letters. About a week later comes this line from research published in the February 25, 2014 issue of Nature Communications, quote, schemes to minimize the havoc caused by global warming by purposefully manipulating Earth's climate are likely to either be relatively useless or actually make things worse, end quote. Finally, in a blow to technocrats published online in the June 25th, 2014 issue of Nature Climate Change, a large and distinguished group of international researchers concludes geoengineering will not stop climate change. The U.S. National Academy of Sciences piles on with a report issued February 10, 2015, concluding geoengineering is not a viable solution for the climate predicament. An analysis by the European Transdisciplinary Assessment of Climate Engineering reached the same conclusion in an assessment published July 16, 2015. As it turns out, the public isn't impressed either. Research published in the January 12, 2014 issue of Nature Climate Change, quote, reveals that the overall public evaluation of climate engineering is negative, end quote. 
Despite per pervasive American ignorance about science, the public correctly interprets geoengineering in the same light as the scientists and contrary to the techno-optimists. All that aside, I am extremely supportive of a geoengineering framework not discussed by any of the above. The Mere Reflection Project being spearheaded by Dr. Ye Tao at Harvard's Roland Center appears to offer a positive path forward. It was not yet developed when all of the information I've presented here was created. It's new, and I believe it might allow the retention of habitat on Earth for longer than we otherwise have. The Mere Reflection Project was discussed in an Ask an Ecologist live stream video conducted February 21st, 2021, so you can find that on this channel. I am not backtracking. Rather, I am changing my mind in light of new information. This is called applying intelligence, not backtracking and not flip-flopping. Thank you for your attention. We look forward to producing another one of these videos in about a week.